As an instructional designer, I use things known as course authoring tools or course authoring software programs to design engaging e-learning experiences for my learners. I work at a university setting and I use a variety of tools in my instructional design processes. Every once in a while, I have an organization reach out and they want me to take a look at something that they've created uh, for a course authoring platform. And if you've been on my channel, you know I'm a big fan of iSpring Solutions. I have several videos on my channel already talking about iSpring Quizmaker, which is an amazing tool you can use to create interactive quizzes for your learning management system. I also have a video on the iSpring Portfolio, which is an amazing feature where you can actually house your content if you're an instructional designer. All of the content that you've made in iSpring, your interactives, put them in a nice polished portfolio so you can share it out with potential clients or job prospects. iSpring is always hitting it out of the park when it comes to their solutions for instructional designers and anybody who's designing learning platforms. And so when they reached out again this week for me to take a look at one of their newer features, iSpring Pages, I was down. I am always willing to take a look at things that could make my job as an instructional designer a little bit more streamlined, more efficient, more engaging. And I'm just a techie who loves all things instructional design and technology. So of course, I'm going to check it out. So this is my exploration of iSpring Pages. Make sure to like and subscribe and check the comments and the information on this video to learn how you can use iSpring in your own practices. It's a wonderful solution. And uh, you're going to see why in just a minute. So let's get into iSpring Pages. <music> So just like Dorothy and Glenda, or Glenda said to Dorothy and Munchkinland, it's always best to start at the beginning. We're going to start at the web page. I love how it's showing us not only visuals of what a completed iSpring page would look like, but there are actually interactive examples that I can click through to get an idea of the capabilities of this platform. Immediately, I'm recognizing this. It is a familiar, uh, comforting <laughs> design aesthetic. Uh, this type of design, this page layout, it really allows designers to create content that is chunked into modules or sections, but it allows you to create some really rich content with lots of text and videos, embedded images, perhaps some even interactive activities that you could use to measure learner understanding. This is such a powerful tool to be able to take uh, instructional problems Problem or a topic and create a fully instructional, uh, a fully interactive instructional module uh, pretty easily. It is a lot of just um, typing in the text box and choosing what tools you want to use. So I already know I'm going to love this, but I, I want to get in there and play around with it myself. So here we are. I'm going to create a new page. And I think of a page as uh, the, you know, your module or the, the topic that they're going to interact with. I see they have artificial intelligence and I'm already obsessed, already obsessed with this. Right here, you can see so many options of things that you can add to your iSpring page. We'll get into some of those in a little bit. And you can just see it's got the places for you to be able to design things according to your needs. I have to try out the artificial intelligence feature. So, hey, iSpring page, I need an introduction to artificial intelligence in higher education since that's what I'm doing right now. Um, and it gives us a little disclaimer. As with anything related to artificial intelligence, you have to make sure it's correct. You have to make sure uh, that it is accurate based on your needs. But if you're new to AI, you need to check out some of my videos on my YouTube channel because I have been low-key obsessed with it and I'm doing so much with it. So iSpring is already getting major plus points in my world because it has artificial intelligence. I just created an entire initial page using iSpring Pages on AI and higher education. And I'm not reading it right now, but I did read this content and it's, it's what I lecture on. It's accurate. It is beautifully presented. I can add a custom uh, cover image to this. So for that, I'm actually gonna jump into Canva. 10 seconds later. <laughs> just gonna add my cover image real quickly. Uh, and you can just see it makes things come alive. It just makes things come alive. I enjoy it. You can adjust preferences like the opacity of your image. Uh, you can add some different coloring options, change up the coloring image. Just always keep in mind um, accessible contrast for individuals who may have some kind of vision considerations. We want to make sure that all of your learners can access your content. And so you're not going to be able to see that white on white background. So I will have to adjust that somehow. Let's do some 
I'll figure that out in just a little bit. But uh, I definitely love the ability to add that cover image. I think it makes learning experiences come to life. So there you go. This is the AI generated content. Um, I don't, sometimes the AI, no matter what platform I use, it's just a little too formal for my liking. So I always go in and edit it. And here you can see I can add so many things like different headers, bulleted lists. I can add quotes, tables. We can have a continue button. I can use videos, images, embed interactive activities, lots of possibilities. Um, and like I said, this is very familiar layout to me. So this is uh, very easy. It's my first time using this platform and I'm already, I'm just going. Um, so I don't think it'll be too difficult for anybody to get started with this kind of content especially with the AI features that iSpring has. So very impressed so far. Very, very impressed. Let's see what else we can do. So this, it says add a new chapter. So even it's going along their terminology at iSpring, it's very much like a, like a book. So the first chapter, maybe I'm going to do AI for research. My second chapter, AI for creativity. And let's see, maybe we'll do one more. AI for productivity. And whenever I lecture on artificial intelligence, when I've done my professional learning facilitations, these are the areas that I already break things up about. Sorry if you heard that beat, but that was the national <laughs> that was the national test. And you probably just got that at 218 on uh, today. So <laughs> anyways, okay. So I've got my chapters ready for this. I have all of that thing, these going on. You can see it just goes through to the next chapter, next chapter, and then I have an area for final thoughts. So it's coming together pretty nicely. Now I just need to add some more content. So let's see what we can do here. So I'm always, of course, going to be using AI because I think you should work smarter and not harder, but always verify that what you're doing is correct. So let's start the AI for, AI for research section with a brief paragraph on the available AI tools that can help, um, that can be used for research in higher education. Let's see. You know, I mean, I like it, but I don't need, I don't know those ones very well. And so I'm not, I don't think that's exactly what I would want it to be. So let's try it one more time and see. There's always a try again option. But remember, if the AI doesn't meet your needs, I mean, that's technically correct, but it's not really what I wanted. So let's try something different. Let's talk about the importance of research in higher education. We'll start this module with a dialogue as to why research is important. There we go. That's some, that's some nice content right there. So we're just going to, yeah, I'm going to add that to there. And I always want to do some additional editing. I know that they have a feature to do some, uh, some more pronounced listing instead of just general text. So let's see if I can adjust that here. I think I can just change it to a bulleted or ordered list. Let's see. Uh, it's still reading as if that whole thing is a number one. So we can do something about that. Hold on. I'm just going to cut that section that I want to be numbered. And then I need to go to a new area where I can get that plus sign. And I'm going to go in and do a list. And then it's just going to be a little bit. This is kind of standard operation for this functionality, just how I paste it in. But we're just going to get rid of all of our manually created numbers, like number two right there. Just delete, delete and then press enter to get the rest of them in there. So it just takes, honestly, just a, a minute or so to get this taken care of. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we got that taken care of. I'm going to cut the summary part and actually put it in the summary. You can see that each like little line in iSpring Pages is very responsive. You can add different content. You can also drag and drop the individual sections to rearrange if you need to. And let's just, I'm gonna add the available tools that I know about. My idea in my head is that this could act as a resource for uh, faculty that I support to go to and see more about AI tools that they can use in these various sections. So let's see what I can add to an iSpring page. What about 
link preview. To create a link preview, insert a link and press enter. So let me grab my first AI tool that I want to include in this sort of database. It's gonna be Scholar AI. It's a tool that you can use to help with that academic research. So here I'm just actually typing in the link manually. I'm not going to, <laughs> I'm not going to paste it in with control V. And I'm gonna go and do it, switch it this way. I'm gonna switch it to link preview. And that's exactly what I wanted it to do. Uh, so the link preview, instead of just a link, it makes it more of an identifiable thing I should click on. Um, for some URLs that you add via this method, it should also give you a little preview image. It's all based on how that individual website is set up. So let me go ahead and put semanticscholar.org in there. Here we go, Semantic Scholar. You can go in there and search for uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of academic articles using artificial intelligence. So uh, here we go again. I'm gonna put in the manual address right here. There we go, let me grab it. There we go, .org. And again, I'm gonna highlight, and I'm just gonna switch it to, change to, link preview. And you'll see this one had a nice, just really nice visually appealing button that they'll be able to click on to take them to that link. Going to our next page, we're gonna do AI for creativity. I'm gonna use artificial intelligence and iSpring page to generate an introduction on using AI for creativity in the classroom. And it's gonna give me a nice header, body text, and different examples here. I like this. Uh, make sure it's got your tone, but that is good. And then I'm going to, just like I did in the AI for research section, here are some amazing AI tools that you can use to enhance your creativity in the classroom. And I'm going to link a bunch of resources that way. And then for my final thoughts page, let's do write a conclusion paragraph on the role of artificial intelligence in higher education. And then I'm going to hit send, and it gives me a beautiful conclusion paragraph I'm going to add. And you guys are, you're watching this in real time, friends. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. This is actually really good because I am submitting a conference presentation um, for next year, for 2024, and I'm actually going to be using artificial intelligence to design a complete course from start to scratch in a 50-minute session. So this is very good practice. Thank you, iSpring, for giving me this tool, and you are knocking it out of the park with the AI embedded. Maybe I'm, I'm doing the wrong one. I'm going to do embed because I actually want the video in the module. So embed, you put a link and whatever that link goes to on the internet, it will be embedded <laughs> into your learning module. So here I am discussing uh, the co-pilot feature that is coming to Windows 11 devices and Microsoft tools that will change the game when it comes to AI on our devices. It's in my opinion, it'll be the next leap of innovation when it comes to AI, and it's going to bring AI to the masses. I have a preview version. It's amazing. And it's done. I'm going to make it share this course via a viewable link. I've got the link. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, look at that. It is so good. And you all, I don't even, we're at 17 minutes. In 17 minutes... Give and some change because I added some resources. But 17 minutes, I was able to create this resource course or page uh, with embedded images, with embedded links, with embedded videos, with um, hierarchical lists, uh, all using the power of artificial intelligence on top of that. Like, what? I love it. I'm obsessed. Obsessed, iSpring. Bravo. So before I leave you all at the very end, this is our finished product. Um, you can see I've added some additional content right here. It's important to note that there are so many options between text generation, we've got bulleted list, ordered list, and this right here is called a call out. So if you need to alert students to 
a particular important information, use that call out feature. There are structured quotes. So if you have a really important quote that you want to make sure that the visual, uh, your eyes are going to be drawn to this quote, use that formatting <clears throat> to draw attention to that. We have tables, the ability to divide content to make it more digestible for learners, continue buttons that allow for an in-your-face navigational aspect so that they don't get lost trying to navigate your pages. Images, videos, embedded activities, attachments, previews. If you've got a file they need to review, you can add that directly into the module. Flashcard activities where they can click on the front of the flashcard and it will reveal a term or definition. And even exercises like multiple choice questions that you can embed into your content. If we look at this right here, I didn't add any of those activities, um, but I did use every other aspect of the design process. So we can go to our next chapter. So it's here for you to um, play around with. And if you are interested in a really functional, uh, affordable solution to begin producing your own instructional design portfolio, or maybe you need content for your learners, check out iSpring Solutions. They have a whole wealth of products that can help support you. So uh, yeah, I am really, really impressed, especially with that AI functionality. In under 20 minutes, I had a multi-page instructional resource for my faculty and using AI in higher education, and I did it all with iSpring Page. It's absolutely amazing. Um, the features, phenomenal. Add your interactive little quiz elements. Add any custom embedded content that you create. Embed videos. Use the headings. Use text. And you share it via a link. Do you know how powerful that is? Truly a uh, game changer. iSpring page, thank you so much for giving me access to this and letting me play with that. Uh, also, thank you for that AI feature because I just had something that was checked off my to-do list and it took a lot less time than I anticipated. Uh, so if you are interested in iSpring, checking out uh, their features, check out the comments and the description in this video for more information. Also check out the iSpring quiz maker video I have on my page and the iSpring portfolio builder video that I have on my YouTube channel for more information about this comprehensive solution. Thank you again to iSpring for uh, giving me access and letting me take a look at this amazing product and for sponsoring this video. I truly do appreciate you all so much. Keep innovating the way that you all are because you're impressing me. You're impressing me. So that's all for today. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to like and subscribe. This is Dr. John signing off. Until next time, have fun innovating. Think outside the box and uh, go try some AI. <laughs> Bye.